It's all beginning to make sense, my friends. This is Tony. Hope you're all doing well. We're going to get into a ton of topics in this video. What's going on with car repossessions? You're not going to believe this. Not going to be seeing a lot of cars on the road as we go into the future. We'll get into that. We're going to get into actually a ton of stuff. We're going to be talking about what's going on in Los Angeles. Of course, also closing of schools now in America. We'll get into that a little bit. And also, the most important thing, a prediction, and I played this over on my other channel, my business channel, but this is absolutely astounding. We have here Clement predicting what we saw with RFK joining 45. We'll get into that also in this video. So we actually have a number of interesting things going on, and it is all starting to make sense, my friend. So getting into... What's going on with this prediction? This is absolutely astounding. Let me show you this. This is really amazing. This is Kim, of course, Clement. Back in 2009, August 29th, 2009. And what he says, let me just show you this. I, I have to hit refresh on this. All right. So first he says this. And there's actually, I actually have the clip. Uh, and it. It, is, it does have the audio, too, on another clip, but I don't want to play the audio. But it is exactly what he says, and I'll show you where you can actually see it yourself on YouTube other than my channel here. But notice what it says here. For what has happened with the Kennedys, says the Spirit of God, was spoken of. Now I will join hands between the you know left and of course right and do an unusual thing says the spirit of god now this is exactly now happened matter of fact there are two major people who have now joined from you know the democrats over to the other side now two major people one of them of course being rfk as you already know matter of fact our former pres is planning on giving him a commission. He'll be over one or two commissions. I'm not exactly sure. One of them is for what it says here. Uh, things that are put in our food. Do you want healthy children? This is one thing he said in this clip here. Basically, he's going to be in a commission where he's going to make sure we have clean air. Uh, our food is good. All that kind of stuff. He's going to be head of a commission for that. Also, there's something else he's going to be head of as well. Also, he's going to be head of another commission looking into what, of course, happened to JFK. And I recently covered what I thought about that whole thing as well on a recent video. I don't know if it was on this channel. <laughs> I think it was on the... Yeah, it was on this channel. I think it was my last video. At any rate, so the fact is he's going to be head of two commissions if... Our former Prez wins again. All right. Now, what's amazing also is we have a second person, a large figure over on, of course, the left, joining in also with our former Prez. We're talking about Tulsi here. She basically says that our former Prez is for freedom and peace and no WAR, unlike the track record of the other lady running right now. So... At any rate, so that's what she says. Now, again, coming back to this prediction, this 100% nails it. It is completely accurate. His prediction was from 2009. He is also the same guy who predicted 45 would, of course, win back in 2016. The same exact man right here, uh, Kim here. He said... Both things. He said that he will win, and this is, like I said, this is 2009. Then he also said that the Kennedys will somehow join hands with the other side. And it will be an unusual thing, which it clearly is an unusual thing. And we're seeing more than one person, so that would be why it has an S right here. You see that? It's multiple people. So this is 100% fulfilled. What is that? Like 16 years later? Yeah, I, yeah, 16, 15 years, whatever, 15 years later, something like that. Long time later, at any rate. So you get the idea. 
Now, so I think that's quite amazing. And there's actually some other clips we're going to go over from Clement there uh, as we get farther into this video. Now, again, we also have a number of other things we're going to cover. We're going to get into what Zuckerberg said recently. We're going to get into what's going on with the church. You ain't going to believe what some people in high positions are saying in the church, including the Pope. We'll get into that, uh, including Billy Graham's daughter. You ain't going to believe what they're saying. We'll get into that and actually a ton of other stuff as we get farther into this video. All right. Well, first, we're going to get into the uh, car repossessions and some of that stuff real quick. And let's just start with this. Car repossession surged 23% as Americans fall behind on payments. And of course, you remember they said you own, at, uh, of course, nothing and at the same time be happy, right? Remember that whole thing? Well, we're now starting to see this happen with cars. Dealerships set to close. Shut down popular car dealership may close 18 locations across the U.S., suffering a $24 million loss. I know with the, the car manufacturer Fiat. They have sold less cars than they have dealerships this year. If you can even imagine that in America, it's like literally selling one car per dealership. Okay. Like not even that. It's even less than that. You have here car insurance rates could jump 50% in three states. Here's where, of course, this was put out uh, about a week ago. And we're seeing this with other things. Property tax. We're seeing all these costs of living going through the roof everywhere. And it seems like this is all something that could be changed. And I believe it is possible. I've shown, I've actually mentioned a couple things that could be done to change this. And I believe our former Prez has some good plans in place. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you one thing he said in a minute here. Where is that at? Uh, yeah, here it is. He says that he is going to find a way to lower energy bills anywhere from 50 to 70%. And the one main reason, he, the one way he's going to do it is by getting rid of certain laws that have to do with climate change. And I've talked about these before. One of them is local law, you know, uh, 97 in New York City, where essentially you're actually paying for breathing as part of your rent. And to, to explain how that is possible... What's going on is they fine your landlord uh, carbon CO2 emissions. And the only CO2 emissions coming from his building are you breathing in it. Okay, for the most part. You're the one causing all the CO2 emissions. So you're actually paying for breathing. Actually, technically not breathing, but exhaling. So every time you exhale while living in New York City apartment, you're actually adding to your rent. Okay. This is the kind of ridiculous stuff they've been doing. And a lot of people don't even are, are completely unaware of this. And so I believe he could actually uh, slash energy bills quite a bit by getting rid of some of these laws. Because right now, actually, I, my background is power plant technology. And I actually had a book about this thick on, on uh, pollution I, I studied while I was in college. And I can guarantee you that we have a very clean energy system in America I even worked for a company called Potlatch, and the water was coming out cleaner on the other end than coming in from the river. Okay, so this is what people don't understand. Our power plants are quite clean right now, unlike back 60 years ago when that's, you know, all the bad news, all the bad uh, reputation came from like the 1960s and 70s. And then ever since, people just assume nothing's happened, nothing's changed, and it's been completely changed. We, I mean, we're talking like one thousandth or one ten thousandth as much pollution as back then. Maybe even a hundred thousandth. I don't know. It's just really a very, very small percentage compared to what it used to be. Uh, and so a lot of these laws are what's causing these issues, right? So he's actually going to do that. And I think another huge thing he could do is putting the dollar back on the gold standard or building back up our petrol oil contracts or both. That will actually undo some of this inflation. Also start drilling for oil. That will be another thing. That would actually build more petrol oil contracts because we could back our own currency with the oil we produce here. Then we could also back it with gold like they did in another country, RUSSIA, which by the way, they're now deemed a rich country after only two years being on their gold standard. 
And now it costs a third as much almost. As I think it's like 40% the price to buy stuff in their stores as here. So there is a way to reverse all this, but they're not doing any of that. The current people in there don't care. They want you to spend all your money to buy nothing, right? So that's what's going on with all that. And we're going to get into actually a ton more as we get farther in this video. And, and one of them has to do with them closing schools. They're trying to bring back the, <coughs> oh, we got to stay home. They're already doing it. Okay, we'll get into that as, we're, as we get farther in this video. First of all, I'm going to mention food supply, 25-year shelf life. Link is in the description. They have a new package, mega three-month food supply, which has more calories per day than the old package. It costs $750, uh, $300 off. This, I would say at bare minimum, is half the price of what you would pay in Walmart for three months worth of food. Of course, this isn't steaks. This isn't Doritos, well, although th there might actually be something like Doritos in it. But it's basically dried items that can last uh, a long period of time. And then you add water, like, for instance, pancakes, rice, you know, things that actually could last 25 years, right? Shakes, they have bread, shakes, all these type of things, uh, you know, potatoes, things that actually could last a long period of time in storage, you know, in case something happens. And you know all the stuff happening this year, my friends. Uh, we could have a world WAR. Matter of fact, that's what our former president has been talking about. If they get back in again, the current, you know, admin, if they get back in again, right, then we could be looking at something like that happening. Of course, if he gets in instead, our former pres 45 gets back in, then he could stop that for, or revert all that stuff from happening. At any rate, it's wise to be prepared. Link is in the description. Of course, this book here, The Lost Ways, How Your Great Great Grandfather Lived Without Electricity, How to Build a Cellar, Do Things Around the House Like They Did in Good Old Days, hundreds of pages illustrated. As I mentioned, there's a lot of things that could happen this year. I've talked about numerous things if you've been watching my videos. Uh, there is a talk of some sort of power outages coming up. A guy predicted it. He also predicted the IT outage that happened. He predicted the exact same day. At any rate, you might want to get that book. Get the printed version. It's $37. Link is in the description. Of course, my website, GR Videos. Go check it out. Link is in the description for that. And also, all my other social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm trying to do stuff over there. Link is, and I'm also on Rumbling, all that stuff. Link is in the description. Let's get back to the video. So we have here, Walmart just dropped something. A major hint is a U.S. recession closer than you think. Home Depot's dire warning adds fuel to the fire. Yes, indeed, Walmart's second quarter sales were stronger than expected, boosting optimism. But actually, that's not really what well, a lot of people don't even know what's going on with that. What's going on is there's actually a lot of people that used to not shop at Walmart, richer people that would go to these mall stores. They stopped going to them. That's why they're all going bankrupt. That's why there's tons of mall stores that have went out of business. And I've covered that numerous times in the past. There's actually several companies. Uh, at any rate, they're all downgrading to Walmart because they're 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 not making as much money. Inflation's higher, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's why Walmart's actually still doing okay. It's because a lot of people that used to shop at these other stores are, are jumping ship from them because they're too expensive over to Walmart now. At any rate, the point is is that all these other companies like Home Depot and, and there's actually uh, Big Lots just went out of business. Home Depot or Big Lots is saying they may actually go out of business. They're actually uh, very much on the edge of filing bankruptcy. I've covered that in other videos. But there's actually a ton of companies that went out of business recently. The point is, is that a lot of these home improvement stores, particularly, there's uh, two major ones that went out of business. Uh, home Depot's closing locations, Lowe's, et cetera, et cetera. No one's doing home improvements because no one has any money. So this is actually like a false uh, positive is what they're basically saying here with this Walmart uh, dropping a major hint that the recession might be closer. Anyway, you get the idea. So uh, getting over to this, this is kind of interesting. RV downturn turns apocalyptic with largest dealership offering 55% discounts. That's clearly a loss of money. I mean, they're just trying to get rid of the stuff at this point. So you can see here, the prices have went way down uh, with the trajectory here on this graph. Uh, their prices are going way down and their monthly US RV shipments are down as well. Uh, so you get kind of the idea. A lot of people are just not able to buy this stuff anymore. 
And that's what's contributing all these problems. Now, there's also this. Now, I remember what I just said about what uh, our former press said he's going to do to lower energy costs. Check this out. This is in the UK. Citizens advise warn, or no, citizens advice warn that one in four will have to turn off heating this winter because they don't have enough money to pay for their energy bills. So this is actually happening in the UK right now, at any rate. And of course, with all of this being said, with this inflation going through the roof, people are not able to afford things. You see in California, them launching several different universal, of course, basic type income. Los Angeles launches phase two of mobility wallet transportation subsidy. So they're starting to get in that direction where you just got money given to you for free, which I think we've heard of this before. What is this called? I think you know the word, my friends. It's definitely not capitalism, right? So at any rate, you get the idea. That's that's all happening. And But the good news, the good news is we're starting to see predictions coming true. I believe this is a sign. We're, we're in sort of rough waters now, but I think we're going to come out on top. That's what I'm trying to say. So definitely understand we're in rough waters, okay? We're definitely in rough waters. We're already seeing them try to close schools. We're seeing it in Massachusetts. We're seeing it, where is this one at? Alabama and Tennessee of all places. Really? You would think these would be the last places to do this, Right? You would think it'd be the last places. No, of course not. Alabama and Tennessee. You have Massachusetts shutting down schools and having curfews because of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes biting people. And there's like some big thing going on with that. Oh no, you might get something or whatever. And then they have this now. Back to the whole <coughs> thing. Surge forces schools to close. Bring back. All, what, what is this from five years ago at this point, right? Four years ago? Bringing this stuff back from four years ago? Seriously? I think we got herd, you know, immunity at this point. I don't know. It's only been four years, <laughs> right? Of course. They, why would they bring it back, friends? Why? Why? I wonder why. Could it have something to do with the end of this year? Of course. But was, like I said, we're seeing, we're seeing good things happen. We're seeing bad things happen. Here's another good one. This guy, and I've talked about this guy a, a few times now, Robbie here, Starbuck, this guy has single, and I'm not going to say single-handedly because there's people in the comments like, well, it's not just him. Well, he's the one leading the charge. He's the one causing this stuff to happen. He's got like five or six companies he's gotten to cave on the rainbow, on the wokey stuff. He has. The last two, they just heard he's going to talk about them. And they just immediately caved. They did, he didn't even have to put out a tweet. He didn't even put one tweet out. And they caved as soon as they heard he was going to do something. We're talking Jack Daniels and now Ford. Ford immediately. Let's just read this. You'll see what I'm saying. This guy has made several companies cave now. No one else was able to do this. Now, of course, like I said, I'm not saying it's just him. Of course, it's not just him. But he's like the guy in the front. He's like the general leading the charge. And he's the one getting it done, if that makes sense. Everyone else is obviously uh, taking part in it, retweeting, uh, writing about it, talking about it, sh spreading it to their friends, whatever. All that stuff's included as well. Uh, but it says here, big news. We were in the middle of investigating the Wokey <laughs> at Ford policies. But this morning, Ford confirmed to me that they're making changes. Here are the changes. Ending participation. See what I'm saying? The guy just starts talking like he's going to do that company next. And they just immediately cave now. Because they saw what happened to Harley Davidson. They saw what happened to John Deere. They saw what happened to, uh, uh, what was it, the other one? Uh, tractor Supply. All of them caved immediately. Now, it makes sense with Ford. It makes sense with Jack Daniels. It makes sense with these companies because these companies' customer base is clearly more rural type people, right? So it makes sense that all these companies he's going after are particularly ones that have rural type of customers, uh, more maybe on, of course, the right. You know what I mean? So that's why they're caving immediately. Like if you went after Nike, they might not cave. Like Nike, 
they don't sell shoes to me, okay? They sell them to urban people more so. So Nike probably wouldn't cave if he did this. They would be a hard one for the to get to cave. But uh, you see what I'm saying? There's tons of companies. And so that's some good news, right? At any rate, you get the idea. So, uh, but like I said, so we're going to get into more stuff. This guy predicted uh, that 45 would win way back when. Uh, what was it? Maybe uh, at this point, it's six years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. I can't add, of course. Uh, <laughs> I was an engineer and I can't add. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so, of course, like I said, this guy also predicted RFK. And now there's actually a clip I wanted to show you. Uh, where is that at? Well, actually, I wanted to show you this, too. I thought this is rather intriguing. We have Zuckerberg says he regrets putting uh, caving to them trying to make him uh, stop certain type of information, of course, being on his platform. At any rate, so he regrets that. Zuckerberg regrets it. And I thought that was rather curious. I kind of wonder if he's just playing both sides uh, where like he's concerned who's going to be the next person that will be in. And he wants to be like kind of on the, on the fence, like, I don't know who's going to win. Uh, I regret it. But then at the same time, he doesn't endorse anybody. He's like, I don't know. And then as soon as he knows who's going to win, then he's like more on that side. You know what I mean? That's 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 kind of the feeling I get from it. I don't know. I could be wrong, but uh, that's just kind of what I'm thinking. Now, getting over to what's going on. Why did why did why did why did, why did all this stuff happen? Why has it been so ridiculous? Uh, over the last four years. I believe it's because the church has no teeth. One of the problems with the modern church is that too many of its leaders wanted to seem like polite citizens. I can't even speak here. Civilians, rather than faithful disciples. They have desired to keep their de uh, desk neat, tidy, do their homework on time, and above all, <laughs> avoid getting told off by the teacher. They have lived as if the worst thing imaginable would be to cause too much trouble. Why do they think this way? Why are a lot of the leadership like this? It's because of the 501, you know, C3, that they 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 put themselves in that category to avoid taxes, but at the same time, there's requirements for doing that. They can't speak up on certain things. They can't do certain things. And that's what essentially has bound the church. And of course, uh, Mark, of course, Taylor, he's talked about this, that the Spirit of God says those are uh, those that are part of this, 501, those are eating of it are not eating from my tree, right? So this is not of, as you would say, God. This is not a good thing. And matter of fact, to give you an idea, who's the one preacher that was friends with all the press in the past? Billy Graham. Remember that guy? Oh, it's kind of interesting. His daughter, granddaughter actually, joins evangelicals for uh, Cammy, as I call her, this lady. Blasts 45 uh, supporters using what? Scripture. How? Claiming Isaiah somehow speaks against him. And I find this rather amazing, how she could support her. I, there's like, you just put it on paper and it makes no sense biblically, right? It just makes no sense at all. Uh, I don't even need to go through all the, the issues. I'm sure you know, it's not rocket science, okay? They were, they were offering some of these services at the convention. So I think you know what I'm talking about. That's just one of many things that are, that's a huge problem. But then you have, of course, Billy Graham back in 1997. He was on, uh, what was it? Robert Schuller's uh, Crystal Cathedral or whatever it is hour of power. Right? And in this, he, he basically says, you don't need to have, you don't need, I mean, in some cases you can get to heaven without, without the King of Kings, without Jesus. You don't need him. He actually said this in this, in this, in this interview way back in 1997, he said that you could somehow get there without him. So I, you know, honestly, and it's not just that there's actually a lot of other things he said that you would be rather surprised about. But uh, getting over to Pope Francis, yet another example of this, intentionally going against the not-so-legals is a grave sin. And what does that mean, by the way? It says hurting. 
No, actually, that's not exactly what he said. Who those? Uh, let me read this. Pope Francis said Wednesday, "Those who knowingly and intentionally repel, repel, repel." Oh, that's interesting. I thought he was all about getting people to follow scripture and, and believing in God and all that kind of stuff. Why does it seem like he never talks about that and he only talks about this stuff? Right? Isn't that interesting? You wonder why the church is toothless. Perhaps it's the leadership. Could it be him? Could it be them? See what I mean? So, of course, this is the daughter of Clement. She, uh, you know, Kim has already passed away, I think, back in 2016. And she's the one leading his ministry. She's she's actually over his channel. And uh, this is actually the clip. If you wanted to go check it out, like I said, you can actually go watch the actual clip uh, from 2009. It's uh, it's on this, this, uh, this is a live stream, I believe it is. On this live stream, yeah, it was a stream live, live stream. Uh, Codebreakers live right here on his channel. So if you wanted to go see the actual clip, it's at the 18 minute mark. And I wanted to play a different clip though from him right here. And this is really interesting. It's about 2024. According to his daughter, this isn't the only thing we're going to see fulfilled. He also spoke a lot. He was speaking a lot about this year, July through November. And all the things that will occur during this time, we already seen one of them fulfilled here about the Kennedys, RFK, joining the other side. But here we have another clip where he talks about the, the months that we're going to be going through now. Let's, let's hear what he has to say. Hypnotic November and oh Christmas, where winter shall say, and me, I will make them happy. For God says I have chosen each season to manifest something. My will shall be done and it shall come to pass that I shall bring sign after sign and in the fall that which comes down is that which was able to be shaken. And actually, let me let me just talk about this because I'm going to tell you what a lot of people are saying with regards to what he's speaking about right here. Because there's actually a number of of different prophets, as you wouldn't call them, uh, those who have predicted what will happen uh, upcoming in these months. And one of them has to do with a stock market crash. Now I mentioned before, and you can see you can see all the mathematics are here. Here's a chart showing exactly what will happen. This is Fred data, the Fed data, okay? Uh, if you look at this, every one of these gray bars is a stock market crash. And it always happens the exact same way. When the yield curve uninverts from down below this black line and goes up, stock market crash. Goes up, stock market crash. Up, stock market crash, as you can see every single time. Even in 2020, now look, we're going back up again. What do you think's coming? Stock market crash. That's exactly what it means. And he says, and there's actually a number of people saying it's going to happen in the winter. And that's what he meant by something's going to fall in the winter. And it said, and then he has another prediction, Kim does there, that the rich and the poor will be eating together because they'll both not have any money. Because what's going to happen is, I believe during the stock market crash, also the dollar is going to lose a ton of value. And those that have huge amounts of money, uh, maybe particularly certain businesses, uh, are going to lose it all or lose a lot of it. So I think this is what he's referring to. This is my guess. I'm not saying I know for sure what he's referring to exactly, but this is my guess. And uh, this has to do with, and of course, hypnotic November, I'm sure that makes clear sense. It has to do with what's coming in November, obviously, but there's supposed to be something that comes at the end of October as well. According to other men have been predicting things, saying that during Halloween, something big is going to happen as well. Actually, I'm not sure if Kim talked about that or not, but that's something to look forward to as well. So there's supposed to be a lot of things happening every month, including September. And I will build and release the resources. And in the fall, 
will show you whom I have chosen to pray for and guide this nation. And and this might, and a lot of people might think this is referring to 45, but I don't think so. There's supposed to be someone coming who's supposed to lead the church. And it's supposed to be sort of a David figure or kind of like, a, like sort of like a uh, Joseph figure. You know, Joseph was second to the Pharaoh, right? This is supposed to be like an American version of a Pharaoh that's supposed to be coming and is supposed to lead the church. And right now, what we have is a bunch of corruption at the top. You saw the Pope, you saw Billy Graham. I mean, honestly, any and you name almost any big minister and almost every single one of them has got uh, some issues, okay? There's probably a couple out there that are okay, but there's not many, very few. Um, we need some actual real leadership that is going the right direction, all right? You shall rejoice, for it is my man. It is my chosen David, says the Lord. Again, like I said, it's not referring to our former pres, not at all. It's referring to a spiritual figure. Now, our former pres is supposed to be represented by sort of like, um, what is it? Uh, I'm trying to remember the word, the, the guy, the, the ancient king who wasn't even a believer. I can't remember his name right off. Was it Cyrus? I can't remember. But uh, I, I, I haven't looked into that in a million years. But he's not represented by this. Okay. Just so you know, uh, I just wanted to make that clear. At any rate, um, so th these are some of these other men that have been putting this together. Uh, you have Bo here in the center. He's kind of like me. He puts all these things together and tries to get him to to see if there's like some harmony, particularly of people who actually have a good track record of things coming true. You have a guy on YouTube called Troy Black. He's probably had about 70 or 80 of his uh, predictions come true already. And he has a website. You can go to it, Troy Black Archive or something, and he shows all of them. It shows you the date of the video and when it got fulfilled and all that kind of stuff. So some of these guys have really good track records, and they're they're actually in line with a lot of saying a lot of the exact same thing that like Kim here is saying and others. So it's really interesting seeing them all correlate like that. But at any rate, of course, also, last thing I wanted to get into a little bit of Hollywood. We have here, of course, uh, uh, what's this guy's name? Alan, uh, actor Stephen Baldwin, uh, what is it? Uh, Alec Baldwin's brother talking about what's going to be happening to Hollywood, saying that they were disruptors and now they will be disrupted. And I think that is true. We have, of course, a story about John Cena. Uh, John Cena, apparently, there's, there's now uh, articles going out against him for some strange reason. Of course, I don't think he's exactly a bastion of anything necessarily good. He was recently in this movie called Jackpot, which is a really strange movie. I watched it. I was like, what in the world? It kind of reflects sort of our culture, just this weird... Like, if our culture just kept going the wrong direction for another 10 years... That's what it would probably look like. But we also have this director, Francis Ford Cap Capola. Is that how you say his name? Capola? Francis Ford Capola. This guy who uh, uh, he did the the grand, uh, the grand Godfather movies, right? Uh, he says he doesn't want his latest movie to be woke and says he's actually bringing in actors that have been, of course, canceled and such as well. Because, I mean, it's just like uh, Sylvester Stallone, same kind of thing. He wants to bring in, he doesn't want his movie to go that well, that, that direction, the rainbow or any of that type of stuff. But anyway, I'm kind of wondering what some of you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below, and thanks for watching.